Throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be, of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world, explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Every culture on Earth tells of an afterlife, where the shades of the departed go when they die. Sometimes the road to the afterlife is an easy transition, but there are tales of final tests and tolls as well. In Greek mythology, the deceased had to pay the boatman Charon for passage to the realm of Hades. In Egyptian mythology, the heart of a person was weighed against the feather of Mott and judged by Anubis. But in Aztec mythology, the deceased had to go through a myriad of trials and tribulations in order to get to their realm of eternal peace, with their guide being a spectral dog. The Aztec people believed that there were multiple places where someone could go once they died, depending on the time and manner of their death, in addition to their actions and choices in life. People who were killed in ritual sacrifice, or fell in battle, went to the east and accompanied the sun in the morning. Women who died in childbirth went to the west and accompanied the sun in the evening. Those who died in a manner pertaining to water or rainstorms went to Tlalocan, a paradise lorded over by Tlaloc, the Aztec god of rain. But the vast majority of the deceased would find themselves on a journey bound for Mictlan, essentially the underworld of Aztec mythology. Ruled by the gods of death, Miklan Tecutli, and his wife, Miktaskasiwa. Some sources suggest that the Aztec underworld itself consisted of nine different layers. The topmost layer of the underworld began at the surface of the earth, and descended downward to the lowermost level of Miklan. After death, the Aztecs believed the soul would have to pass through each of these layers on the journey through Miklan. Along the way, certain challenging obstacles would be encountered, each one associated with one of the nine layers. The journey would be long and arduous, spanning a time of four years before the soul finds themselves in the land of Miklan. First, the dead would come to a place where a great river called Apanawaya roared along. Wide and gushing, intimidating and nigh impossible to swim across. In order to cross this uncrossable river, the dead would need the aid of the psychopomp Xoloto, who would take the form of the Jolo dog. After the crossing, the shade was stripped of all of their clothes and would begin the second part of their journey through a pass called Tepedal Moramiclia, a desolate place of stone where the hills would smash into one another and crush anything in their path. At the end of the pass, the deceased would be forced to walk through East Tepedal, a hillside strewn with napped flint and sharp obsidian the same material used for the sharp edges of knives and arrows. The next stage was the walk through Sewaloyan, eight mountains covered with perpetual snow that would never cease, whipped by strong winds so cold and strong it would cut the body as obsidian blades. All the while the shade would be haunted by their saddest memories. After this, the dead would arrive at the foot of the hill, the last stop in the first part of the journey, called Panquequé Tlaqueon, extensive moors where the dead would have to walk endlessly, crossing the desolate land as huge gusts of wind blow endlessly, 
rendering the souls to flutter around like flags in a tempest. The dead would continue their journey down a long path called Temimi Naloyan, where they would be struck with arrows fired by unseen hands trying to harm the passerby, and each arrow representing a person who had an influence on the departed, and each said to be an arrow lost in battle. At the end of the path, they would arrive at Tekoilena Loyan, a dense forest swarming with carnivorous beasts. When any of the beasts reached them, the passerby would have to tear open their chests and let the beasts eat their heart. Afterwards, they would be forced to dive into the Apanoaloyan, where the water was black, the sun would never rise, and where the lizard called Zochelonel had lived. The dead would have to swim through nine rivers, unaided, dodging the animals, including the terrifying lizard, to reach the next level. Tired, injured, exhausted with suffering, the dead would finally reach their destination in Chikona Miklan, where they would see their lives pass before their eyes, until they at last meet Miklan Takutli and his queen. Exactly how the departed spend the rest of eternity has been lost to the ages. Some say that only more suffering would commence upon reaching the final destination. Others say that after enduring such hardships on their way through Miklan, the Shade was given a reward of eternal rest. And others say that upon meeting the rulers of the dead, the Shade would simply extinguish, cease to exist entirely, their time in both the realm of the living and the realm of the dead having come to an end. Whatever the deceased's ultimate fate may be, the afterlife of Aztec mythology holds a unique distinction of having such a lengthy journey filled with obstacles, dangers, and even monsters. In other traditions, the transition into the afterlife is rarely as long, and such terror and suffrage was a fate often reserved for the wicked and the unjust. But to the Aztecs, while there were certainly some exceptions to the rule, everyone was equal in death, and required to make the arduous and perilous pilgrimage through the land of Mictlan. <laughs>